Well, if you just tuned in, it's The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us this beautiful Monday morning. We have Tunde Kualawale joining us as unusual. Uh, Tunde, it's good to have you join us today. Thanks for having me, Lady Mercy. All right, then. Uh, Kofi's also here with us. Uh, we'll start off with the punch. 20.52% inflation, economic crisis. Uh, I think that I have to take that again. A bit of, you know, an error on the other part. Uh, the punch talks about tax reliefs and concession. Federal government grants 16 trillion naira waivers to Dangote, Honeywell, and others. Uh, duty waivers, tax relief, good for country economy or economy, but discriminatory. Economists slam the federal government. Duty waivers, tax reliefs, good for economy but discriminatory economists slammed the federal government. South Africa earned $107 billion tax revenue in 2021. Nigeria, $15 billion behind Kenya, Angola. Revenue slums as debt servicing GOP 6.16 trillion naira in 16 months, says the uh, says DMO report. Away from taxation, debt, and what have you. Uh, we have all the caption. PDP crisis worsened as BOT mids autumn fintery today. Federal government secures pipeline with 12 billion naira, pays IOC's $4 billion. Students to ground Lagos airports, please threaten showdown. Atiku Kwankwaso have no street credibility. It reminds me of Two Faces' song. Uh, Kiyamo is quoted on that. 2022, 22 people killed in Abuja, Lagos, Ogun crash, 12 hospitalized. And just before we move away from the punch, you have Nigeria's oil production crashes to 900,000 barrel per day, really. 24, Sue Einek alleged 7 million votes of voters unregistered. These are the headlines on the punch. Let's go quickly to the nation this morning. Uh, interestingly, the paper um, doesn't lead with a story on the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Uh, surprisingly, as it has over the past few uh, weeks. But um, the lead story on the front page of the nation is strike. Reps Asu meet over face-off with government tomorrow. Reps Asu meet over face-off with government tomorrow. Only God knows if anything will come out of Nazareth. Um, union asks to submit written presentation, case against teachers for hearing uh, today. So we'll keep our eyes on the National Industrial Court. Now, next from the nation, why Nigerians in diaspora must mobilize for Tinubu. Uh, all aspirants to a laughing still qualified, says Oyo Messi. Uh, Buhari in the United States for United Nations General Assembly. I think that explains why uh, he's not in London this morning. Oshun Paul, a delicate hint, so admits uh, to voting in six polling units. Amazing. Stock market's new rule threatens investors' one trillion Naira funds. Uh, more from the nation of Pebi or Jota Link Bridge, traffic diversion at Maryland. Main day begins tomorrow. That's for those who are living in Lagos State. It will affect me. Mercy. Um, PDP governors mount pressure on week eight to drop IU must go call. Uh, Riders to that division in Southwest chapters over marking this position. Fire to meet Rivers governor. And we have world leaders to attend Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Uh, Chinese undergoing probe for killing Nigerian lover and marking day or your APC clash are headlines on front page of the nation. Well, let's uh, move away from the nation and take a look at the leadership. On the leadership, nine days to go, APC, PDP, Labour, others strategize and fine-tune campaign machineries. Uh, my campaign team will lead PDP to victory. That's what uh, Tiku is quoted to say. Tamberwell's appointment, plot against South, says Wike's camp. Wike is not speaking, but his camp is speaking. Tunubu appoints Yahaya Bello as youth campaign coordinator. Labour Party to leverage organized labor structure. 
These are the riders underneath the bold caption. Again, you find 2023 budget, NAS to amend Finance Act over 11.03 trillion naira deficit. Quite interesting, as there might just be a proposition uh, for 19.76 trillion naira uh, budget through amendment of some relevant acts of the finance. I mean, I mean, we're talking about the finance acts here now. Okay, just before we move away, strike court here as federal government suit against ASU today. Over 500 world leaders to grace Queen's funeral. Well, it's a long, it's a long one. And Iwayanwo Kondrewela, Elumelu, 54 orders mobilized for development of Igbo land. Federal government wants local contractors over field projects. Yobe boat mishap, death toll increases to 11. That's it on the leadership. And the final uh, bus stop for us this morning is the Daily Trust uh, with some interesting uh, headlines. And I think the following uh, have something on its weekly security review as um, contained on front pages, also carried by the punch. Uh, quite inter interesting to see. But the big story there, how bandit leader at Tuji escaped NAF bombings. Uh, 12 buried, fighters, women, kids affected. Residents in panic over possible reprisal will sustain the temple military. Uh, the Daily Trust, of course, is expected uh, having a bias for stories coming from the northern part uh, of the country. More from that paper. 19 killed in FCT road crash. Masquerades invade Plateau Church, flog pastor worshippers. My God. And uh, some headlines on the front page of the uh, Daily Trust. Let's go over to um, our guest who is uh, joining us, Sunde Kolawali, uh, this morning. And uh, Tunde Kolawali, let's start with the one from the nation uh, as read out earlier with the House of Representatives um, meeting with uh, striking ASU uh, over their face off with the federal government. Do you think, like I asked earlier, anything good can come out of Nazareth? Well, uh, it's a good development. Whatever is going to bring peace to the university system, in my humble opinion, should be a welcome development. My only reservation is that um, this intervention should have come long before now. For example, it is not impossible for the National Assembly to look at the budget they have passed in the past and see how that budget can be rejected and some money there was meeting the demands of the educational uh, sector. They could also have made a supplementary budget to take care of the demands of the uh, of, uh, ASSO. But somehow, because the public didn't want to step on the shoes of the, on the toes of the executive, the National Assembly has kept quiet for too long over this matter. I will be surprised, however, if this intervention coming from the House of Representatives, we'll be able to address the demand of ASSO. Why do I say so? The problem the Deputy Arm of Government is missing, I mean, is having, or one of the problems that they're having, is that they really don't even have the money now to meet most of the obligations that they hold to the Nigerian people, including foreign creditors. You are now read in the paper this morning, the oil, that we now sell in the international market has dropped to 900,000 parents per day. Nigeria's revenue generation in terms of taxes has been said to be lower or to be smaller than that of Kenya. And when you compare to that of South Africa, also look at the quantum of money that is said to be required to service our foreign debt. And also look at the amount of money that is going to be required to power INEX to be able to conduct the 2003 election. So we are in the catch 22, so to say. If the people in the House of Representatives are able to solve this problem, it will be a miracle to men. But it is better to judge all than to war war. Okay. What does that mean? Should they call our well, <laughs> it means that uh, we should keep talking we should continue the dialogue until we find a solution to this problem, rather than embark on violence, uh, which is not going to uh, solve any problem. 
it would rather compound the problem. All right, then. For example, the students you know are vowed that they will start uh, bombarding the airport and grind all flights in and out of Nigeria uh, from this week. Last week, we embarked on the blocking of major highways all over the country, which distorted traffic in a number of places. So if the airports are short term, it will also have enormous consequences on the economy of the country and a very bad publicity or PR for the country as a whole. As of today, our image is not too good in the international community because of the insecurity that is prevalent all over Nigeria. Well, Tunde Kala, well, let's move away from that. We, we have the punch where... Uh, you know, it's reported that economists are slamming the federal government as regards, you know, tax concession and what a view relieves for some companies. It's been tagged as discriminatory. Well, however, the federal government has foregone 16.76 trillion naira in revenue to tax reliefs and concession to large companies between uh, 2019 and 2021. That's according to reports and finding. However, 46 of these companies have benefited while you have requests uh, for 186. Would you really agree that, you know, this tax reliefs and concessions quite discriminatory? Uh, well, you know, um, some time ago, the federal government began this uh, program of giving some highways to some of these major businesses, like Dangote, like Onewell, and all that. They are told that if they are able to fix the road, things like uh, tax waivers and some other things, I mean, some other concessions will be given to them. And um, some of them, like Dangote, they constructed their Papa Oshoti Ouro Road and whatever. And because of that intervention, we are enjoying a very motorable uh, atmosphere on that axis. It is not impossible, and uh, it is because of uh, those projects that some of these companies that have been mentioned are getting these tax uh, uh, waivers. Secondly, you and I will know how many com companies in this country as of today are actually producing goods upon which they can enjoy tax waivers. There are very few, you can count them on the fingertips. Dangote, Honeywell, and then the Bois Group. And what do they produce? Basically, cement and household items like uh, noodles, sugar, uh, cement, and water. So, if a company isn't producing goods and services upon which it ordinarily should pay tax to the federal government and is asking for tax waivers, the possibility that that kind of a company will get it uh, will be very, very slim. Furthermore, we must be very careful as Nigeria, given our experience with the first subsidy cap that we have had in our hands over a long time now. With the oil subsidy thing, the Nigerian airlines will import uh, two, three cargoes of oil and then insist that the federal government should pay them subsidies for 25 cargoes of uh, oil. The Nigerian allies are incorrigible people. Once they know that there's a tax waiver and concession to be given, they will also begin to do the kind of things that they were doing with the first subsidy thing, such that the federal government has to be very careful, and Nigerians also have to be very wary of whatever noises are coming from that sector. But if any of these companies think that they deserve uh, tax concession, tax waiver. There are the new, there are tax tribunals which they can take the federal government to to be able to get what they think that it is up, which has not been given to them. All right, interesting one, uh, Tunde Kolo. Let's uh, move on to other um, uh, stories. Uh, our usual PDP segment. Uh, I don't know if you're getting bored uh, with the PDP <laughs> stories. Interesting, the nation didn't give prominence to the PDP, uh, uh, but still put it in the corner, maybe just to avoid a continued public uh, questioning over its, uh, its uh, coverage of this 
But it's still there. PDP governors bound pressure on Rike to drop Ah, you must go call, is what the paper is saying. The vision in Southwest chapters over Mackinday's position. Uh, of course, Mackinday was uh, at that meeting of PDP stakeholders in the Southwest with the presidential candidate Atiko yeah. Bokar last week, where he said that uh, Bokar is the incoming president, but Ah, you must step down. Uh, another rider to that, fire shade to meet the river's governor. Um, but the, the, the nation, uh, sorry, the daily, the punch has this twist to it. It says PDP crisis worsens BOT meets or Tom Fintiri today. What are your thoughts on the latest as uh, regards the former ruling party and its uh, internal well, issues? For me, it is a tragedy of a monumental proportion. Uh, all of us as Nigerians want a situation which will have uh, so many choices with regards to which political party to vote for. So, when a formidable, or when a party like the PDP, which is supposed to be a formidable opposition to the APC, is in this kind of crisis, and when you also look at all the other French parties, like the Labour Party, like the APC, and what have you, they have not been living up to expectations in terms of mobilizing the Nigerian people behind themselves so as to be able to give the Nigerian people alternative in terms of what political parties to vote for. So, I am scared that Nigerians may not really have any good choice or any alternative choice other than the APC with what is happening in the PDC and what is happening with regards to some of these other uh, political parties. For the dramatic person like uh, Wiki, honestly, I feel uh, thoroughly embarrassed as a pastor, that the man is behaving that way. If he's listening to this program, I will advise him that he is a very young man. He still has a lot of opportunities ahead of him to become whatever he wants to become in this country. Whether, I mean, as a president or whatever, or vice president. But the way he's going about it, he is merely undermining and jeopardizing his own political future. I suspect, or I have a feeling, that in the nearest future, nobody will want to touch a wicked with a hundred foot long pole because of this is a uh, denanigan and inability to make compromises and also behave like a statesman simply because of his own personal ambition. With Ayu, I used to know him as uh, a responsible, humble, and um, a democrat uh, somehow. It's been a long time one has had access to him now. I would have thought, in line with the promises that he made, that immediately as he were emerged as the presidential flag bearer of the PDP, he should automatically step down because of the zoning formula that they have in the PDP as a political party. But the man has become so desperate to cling to that post, not minding whether it could lead to the disintegration of the PDP, not minding whether it will jeopardize their chances come the 2003 election. For people like Mackinde, I think he is merely uh, trying to safeguard his own uh, interest. If he doesn't, um, he might be fearing that if he goes all out to support the Northern candidate uh, to the detriment of where the Yoruba people who want the pendulum of the presidency to swing to, it may affect his own governorship candidacy in Oyo State. That is why the man has been trying to walk a very tight rope and they're playing um, a very tight game, so to say, to be on the state side. But whatever be the case, the issue today, in my humble opinion, is not between Yoruba and the outside. It's not between the Ijaws and the Kanuris. It is about good candidacy. Nigeria is in a terrible mess. And it is whoever can deliver, it is whoever can save Nigeria out of this quagmire, out of this terrible mess that we are economically, politically, socially, uh, educationally, uh, health-wise. We should just go for the person, no matter where the person might be coming from. I don't believe in all these tribal things. The tragedy now in terms of unemployment is a monumental war that all Nigerian nationalists, all Nigerian statesmen, all responsible student leaders 
all unionists and others to close their eyes to so wherever any candidate may be coming from. Identify the good candidates among the different political parties and just ensure and support and campaign and finance and make sure that the elections are not leaked wherever they may be or wherever they may vote. Anything other than this, I foresee bloodbath in Nigeria after the 2023 election. Uh, Tunde Kola Wale, mm -hmm. let's look at the punch now. Uh, it okay. talks about uh, the oil, Nigeria's oil production crashes to 900,000 barrel per day. Do you think that there's an implication uh, with this statistics or figures that we have? I understand. Do you know with the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, this is a time Nigeria should be making a windfall uh, from oil. This is a time we should take advantage of the unfortunate of the unfortunate war between Ukraine and uh, uh, Russia. Not just in the area of petroleum, but also in terms of gas supply to the European country and some of these other countries. But lo and behold, we are unable to take that advantage. And why? The issues are very straightforward. The restiveness in the Niger Delta is affecting oil production. Just about two or three days ago, Atari Tokubo is threatening to shut down uh, oil production in the Kalabari region. There are also some people in rivers and cross rivers who are threatening to blow up all the power pipelines because of what? Because the pipeline protection uh, contract that has been given to Tomboro and then allegedly to the Olu of Wari and a few other partners is to their disadvantage. They say it is to follow, and then the Olu of Wari shouldn't be the ones eating alone. And if they're going to be in the world of Atari uh, Kubo, and I think they will be the one the federal government will put food on their table, they will make sure that they don't give, they don't have the opportunity to eat those of those smells. So we require to kind of uh, navigate the geopolitical system in a crisis in the Niger Delta in such a manner that uh, Nigeria will be able to take advantage of the increasing demand in gas and in oil supplies in the international market. We did that before successfully. There is no reason why we couldn't do it again. But we are unable to do it because the people we have at the end of affairs today are not crisis managers. Tundekola Wale, I'd like you to share with us uh, the implications, if there are any, you know, for this. The fact that uh, we have actually, our output has actually reduced, comparing that to what yeah. is expected. Are there any implications? Oh, very serious implications. You and I do know that uh, Nigeria is a mono economy, a rental economy, an economy that depends solely on selling of uh, petroleum, uh, food petroleum, and using the money to buy goods and services, and then to run government. Once you are unable to sell enough oil, and with the with the debt that we have to service, and then the unemployment that we have, and then the goods and services that are disappearing from the bookshelf, you find time, go to Ikeja, go to the computer village, and look at the shares of most of those companies that are selling things like ordinary uh, phones, computers. Go to the market, the market, and look at the shop where the women are selling rice and beans and what have you, and noodles. And look at how empty the shelves are before. So once you're unable to sell enough oil in the international market, the any capacity of the country in terms of forming a changing flow is going to be affected. And when it is affected, it will be difficult for the government to really be able to get the resources to run the country. The only thing they will resort to is what they describe as ways and means, merely printing money and then spending it. And when you begin to print money and spending it, without backing it up with any production, then it will lead to inflation. The international market too, the foreign government too, will find it difficult or they will be weary of dealing with you. Because they know you are not producing anything, and then you want to be eating. 
you want to be uh, buying from them with merely money that are not backed up with any production, productive activity, and all that. So it's, it's, it's a serious crisis. If you affect the economy, even they fight against insecurity, the maintenance of the military, the buying of weapons, arms and ammunition, will be drastically affected. And once it is affected, chances are that the bandits, whether in the urban area or in the rural area, can easily overrun the country. All right, well, Kimbekolo, interesting one. Um, I mean, we look forward to having you in the studio sooner or later because, I mean, your analysis is always perfect, spot on, and always interesting and engaging. So I want to thank you thank very you. much uh, for your time. Thank today. you for having me. So much. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, we have to move on, Mercy. Definitely. We'll take a break now. And, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first conversation right here. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history, being the 19th day in September. Please stay with us. Thank you.